I go out on the limb and I'm going to say it. There is no amount of alcohol that is healthy. Um, the J curve is a misnomer. And what I think I would say is somewhere between zero and one, there's probably that much, of, there's not that much of an increase in risk, but there's not a reduction in risk, right? So the- For what? For for, 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 for mortality in general. Mortality. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in other words, you know, they talk about the sort of J curve where n complete abstinence is a greater risk than, you know, one drink a day. Uh, but but I think both the Mendelian randomization makes that not makes it clear that that's not true. And then secondly, when you look at all the confounders of the people who are drinking zero drinks and what confounds their mortality, um, I, I feel very comfortable saying that there is no dose of alcohol that is healthy. But you know, at a very low dose, again, probably four to seven drinks per week, it probably has immeasurable. Um, or pardon me not immeasurable. You probably can't quite quantify the harm. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that would be my take. And, and so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable saying that. I, I really feel confident that that is the case um, and that you know things like the French paradox have far better explanations as one example. Yeah, I, I I tend to think. I mean, there's uh, the data is also a mess. Like you, like I agree with you, and um, it does seem like you know, like can you have your weekend, you know, glasses of wine, like Friday, absolutely. Saturday? I think you can, and you know, with respect to the cancer risk, and like that's that's considered, you know, it's mild. I mean, it's less than yep. you're having less than one drink a day, and the only evidence I've really seen against the the mild is on the National Cancer Institute site, where they like. It's one of those cancers where it's like one in 500. Like it, it it increases your risk of a cancer that you already have a lifetime risk of one in 500. And it's still less than 1% of an increased, like yeah. it, to me, yeah. it's like it, your it, lifetime risk. That's my point, you can't, you can't right. measure it. You can't, uh, like I mean, you can't measure it, yeah. It's a classic okay. example of the dose makes the poison, but don't confuse that the poison is a poison, right? So right. another example would be cigarettes. If you smoked a cigarette twice a week, literally one cigarette twi twice a week, would your risk of cancer go up? Yes, but you wouldn't be able to measure it. That doesn't change the fact that right. cigarettes are harmful, right? Not to mention heart disease, like that—that yeah, yeah, yeah. that is not a linear, like that. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, it's it's it, but but even just focusing on cancer, right? Like, it really comes down to kind of establishing causality, right? Is tobacco causally related to disease? Yes, it's 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 a harmful thing to take, but the dose matters, right? Like again, just being glib, one cigarette a week is. It's probably increasing risk, but we don't live long enough to see that to see the separation of those Kaplan Meyer curves, right? Maybe if we lived, maybe if our natural lifespan was 500, one cigarette a week would be sufficient to see a spreading of those lines. But at an 80 year right. lifespan, eh, it, you have to get up to 10 cigarettes a day before we can see where that is. By the way, I'm making that up. I'm not advocating that one can smoke up to point, nine yeah. cigarettes a day, but you know what I'm getting at, right? And I think yeah. that's my point with with alcohol. It's 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 simply just a question of of that, but but I just want to make sure people aren't taking away from this that you know look I probably have anywhere from zero to four drinks a week, but when I'm drinking those four drinks across two or three days, uh, it's not going through my mind that this is healthy. It's mm -hmm. like yeah, this is a hedonic pleasure that's <laughs> not good for me, but it's enjoyable. That's enjoyable. What? Yeah. How do you feel about APOE four carriers and? alcohol consumption like our, our like view two, in the practice four. is that they are indeed more susceptible um to the deleterious effects of alcohol um and also i would say they're just more susceptible in general to the dele deleterious effects of poor sleep which is one of the ways that i think alcohol is disproportionately hurting the brain um you know i think poor sleep is is causally driving alzheimer's risk and cardiovascular disease risk. I'm less clear on cancer, but in as much as most people that are drinking alcohol are doing so in the evening, and anybody who's used a sleep tracker, you know, you don't need to be Matt Walker to to very quickly do the experiment on yourself and compare a night of sleep with no alcohol, a night of sleep with alcohol. They're different. Um, yeah. And and so so through that lens, I would just say, you know. If we have we have lots of patients with E4 in our practice, including a number of E4 E4s. We you know, even though those patients represent only two percent of the population, they're probably about seven or eight percent of our patient population. And um, 
again, we say, look, unless this really means the world to you, it's probably not worth a drink. Um, and if you are going to have a drink, here are some principles for how you might minimize the damage, right? In terms of the number you might have, how long you might have it before bed, that kind of thing. 